What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you 20 awesome settings that you could do on your iPhone that Apple doesn't want us to know about. Let's get started. All right, so this first thing I wanna show you is the ability to clean up your Apple Music. Now, by default, if you're not subscribed to Apple Music, even if you're not subscribed, you're still gonna have these annoying tabs. And if you aren't subscribed, this section right here typically will show you like an ad to subscribe to Apple Music and here's our prices, blah, blah, blah. But you don't want this. You just want a clean layout. To remove that, to make it how it originally was before the existence of Apple Music, just go into your settings, go down to where you see music. Click on this right here where it says show Apple Music. Just go ahead and disable that. And now when you launch the app, you have the original clean layout. So your music libraries tab is right here radio you still have access to that and you can still search right here for spotlight search so if you're not subscribed to apple music and you just want to get rid of that have a cleaner layout that's how you do so now this next one's really useful especially if your friend is on an android the green text bubble i'm pretty sure this is like an ios meme but whenever you're texting an android phone they're limited Sometimes if you text like a long paragraph, a long sentence or something, your message gets cut short. You'll understand more as soon as I show you what to change. If you go into your settings, go down to the message tab right here, scroll down to where you see character count. Now when you enable, enable this, if we go back to that message, now when you type something up, kind of hard to see, let me turn off my dark mode. You see right there, we have a counter. So you have an idea exactly where your message is gonna be cut short. So you can see the limit amount so that doesn't happen again. Now this third one, we're still in the Messenger app, but I wanna show you something. New for iOS 13 was the fonts. You know, in iOS 13, we got this new font setting. If you go right here, you can actually install fonts. Now, unfortunately it doesn't work as you may think. Like. You can change like the fonts on the phone itself. Like here where it says general about software updates. That it doesn't change that. There's applications like like Font Dinner. It's free to download. And this will allow you to install these new fonts to your device. Now unfortunately, these third-party fonts that you installed, these only work on like documents, emails, and other office applications because it doesn't work on Messenger, unfortunately. But there is apps like this, fonts that will actually allow you to actually put these different fonts shortcuts on your keyboard, which is what I have done right here. See how it says fonts? I have access to all these different font styles to choose from. And when you actually send them, the person on the other end actually sees that. So that's something you can do if you wanna change the font when you're messaging someone. I'll make sure to leave the uh, links to these third-party apps in the description for you guys. And then of course, if you slide from the right to the left, like so, you can see the timestamp when you send the message. And that's already something we should all know. Another cool setting you could change on your keyboard. If you see right here, I have Japanese keyboard enabled. Whenever I switch to the Japanese keyboard, if I actually go into the number tab right here, you see this little face icon, if I tap on this, I have access to all these pre-made text faces to choose from. This is really cool. And to enable this, if you want to send as a message, all you gotta do is just go into your settings, go down to general, go to keyboard, tap keyboard. And right here you see I have Japanese. I'm gonna go ahead and disable this and delete it so I can show you guys exactly how to set it up. So go right here and add a new keyboard. Just go down where you see Japanese and then tap on this one and just hit done. For some reason, that's the only keyboard that actually will give you funny looking little faces. So for number seven, it's a combination of a few different settings you could adjust to have the ability to record with your phone without others being aware of. Let's say for example, there's an incident happening that you have to document for evidence proof, maybe in the future or something like that. And you have to record it. Typically when you're recording with your screen, like so, I mean, on this end, it doesn't look like you're recording, but on this side, it's noticeable that you are recording with your iPhone. But there's a way you could do this. Tap reduce, bring down the control center. And now I'm still recording, but the screen is so dim that you can't really tell. Because the brightness is so low, it looks like the screen is turned off. You can still see the screen, you just have to move it super close. Now, if you wanna also know how to do this, let me go ahead and bring up the brightness, stop recording, triple tap on the power button. See, now our screen's back to normal. If you wanna know how to also do this, simply just go into your settings, go down to accessibilities, go down where it says accessibility shortcut, and just check mark, reduce white point. When that is check mark, now when you triple tap, it'll actually dim down the screen and you can bring down your control center and bring it down even more. And now our phone looks like it's turned off. So use this responsibly. Now for this next one is the ability to actually add a second person to be authorized 
for Face ID to unlock. So you can actually set two different profiles. You'll be surprised how many people don't know about this. So if you want to set an alternative Face ID, just simply go down to your Face ID and passcode, enter your passcode, and just simply slide down where it says set up an alternative appearance. So, so if you notice when you're wearing a certain apparel, like sunglasses or something like that, Face ID is having a hard time detecting your face, you can just set it up here or you can let your spouse be have, also have access to your phone by going through the setup procedure. So that's available in case you want to set that up. So for number eight, there's something that I had on from the very beginning, ever since this was innovated. Now by default, whenever you unlock your phone, you don't feel anything. You have to visually look at the check mark to know really if your phone is unlocked. Now there's a setting you can enable where it actually will give you an haptic feedback whenever your phone successfully unlocks, like so. If you also want this feature, just gotta go into your settings, go to accessibility, go down where it says face ID and attention and just enabled haptic unsuccessful authorization. Now whenever your phone unlocks, you will feel it. So you know when your phone is unlocked. Have you ever browsed on social media and you, and you see these addicting looking games but you want to try it? But then when you actually play it, it's like bombarded with a bunch of ads. As I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate right now. See, every time when I clear a level, I just get a bunch of ads. This is really annoying. Now, a way to eliminate that, simply just go into your control center and just put your phone in airplane mode. And just force close the app and go back to that game. And that is how you can bypass these annoying apps that just abuse their ads. Now for number 10th is a creative way to change the look of your iPhone. Now, as I previously mentioned, you cannot change the font for the text underneath the apps or the font on the settings. But what you can do to give your phone, your device, a special look that separates them from other iPhones. Here on the settings, if you go down to accessibility, display, and see where it says on slash off labels, enable this. And now all of these little modes that you can enable or disable, actually have O's and I's for on and off. I know, just a unique way to change the look of your device, I guess. Now for these next few, takes place in Safari. If you accidentally, like, let's say you close an important tab you wanted, instead of going in your history and looking for it that way, if you actually do this and tap and hold the plus icon, you go back to the recently closed tab. You'll be surprised how many folks don't know about this. But now let's say you want to remove this toolbar right here to Give your device a cleaner look. Let's say you're typing up something, you want a full screen. If you tap the AA icons right here, you can actually hide the toolbar to give you that full screen. So if you're writing, typing up something, and you just want to have a full screen, this is how you do that. You can still swipe to go forward or go back. And if you want to bring it back up, simply just tap anywhere on top and it goes back to normal. For number 13, there's a setting you can use to create custom vibration patterns for different people in your contacts. This is another settings I noticed not a lot of folks know about, and it's really easy to do. So here we selected somebody in our contacts. If you tap edit and go down where it says ringtone right here, you see we have by default. If you tap on this vibration, tap on this, and you just go all the way down and you can create new vibrations right here. When you're at this screen, you literally can tap anywhere on the screen. If you look closely, it's making different unique vibration patterns. So now when this person gives us a call and you have your phone on silent, you'll have a good idea who's calling without actually having to look at the phone. And of course you could call this whatever you want and it saves. And then while we're at it, another setting you could change. Let's say you have your phone on do not disturb, but let's say Mark right here, he happens to be a person we want to be aware of that's calling even when do not disturb is enabled. If you go back into the ringtone, on top of here, you see we have the emergency bypass. When this is enabled, now even though our phone is on do not disturb, if he calls us, it's still going to ring our device. Now another thing I really have to share with you guys, if you also get bombarded with a bunch of telemarketers or just get spam with a bunch of unknown callers, this was new for iOS 13 and there's a good chance there's a majority of people who aren't aware about this feature, especially if you just got an iPhone for the first time. But if you actually go into your settings, go into your phone tab and go down where it says silent unknown callers, when you enable this, if the phone number that's dialing you isn't in your contact, it's going to be automatically sent to voicemail. Now Apple perfected this. So in case, let's say the police department, a hospital, if it's a known established company, it's not going to get sent to voicemail. See right here where it says Siri suggestions. That means those numbers that's not known to be a telemarketer will still be able to get a hold of you. So that's one clever way to get rid of those 
spam calls. Now, if you use the notes app, but you don't want it to be linked to your iCloud account, you want to make sure everything you type up will actually stay on your device. There's a way you could disable this just by going into your settings and go to your iCloud scroll down. Yes, I know I have a ton of Apple watches, but if you tap on iCloud and you can just simply disable it like so. As soon as you hit delete, all the notes that you take on your phone will actually stay on your phone. So doing that will obviously free up a lot of space on your iCloud in case it's already full and you wanna remove that annoying notification you typically would get. So these next few settings are in the camera app. You know how when you switch to the panoramic mode, the arrow tells you to go one direction. Well, you don't have to actually do that. You go actually, if you tap the arrow, it'll actually rotate and you can go towards the other direction in case you can't. Another new thing is now on iOS 13, we recently got an update where you can actually change the resolution right here by simply tapping. Gone are the days that you have to go into the settings to adjust that. Now you can simply control it all right here. Now, if you have some photos in your photo library and you just don't want others to have easy access to it, let's say you lend your phone to a friend or something, you have some delicate information you don't want them to add and they see well if you actually go in here if you tap the share icon right here and navigate downwards you have this option right here where it says hide tap on this hide photo and now if you go into your album go all the way down there's a little hidden album right here and now all the photos that you put here are not gonna be in the camera roll. They're in this separate file. Now, there's no passcode or anything, but there's a couple more steps you gotta do to get access to this file so somebody won't accidentally see what you're trying to hide. Now, I think I did lost count. I'm gonna say this is number 20, correct me in the comments. But if you're having a hard time going to sleep or you wanna listen to a certain podcast, but you don't wanna play it overnight because you may be asleep and your phone's still playing the audio, you don't want it to accidentally wake you up midnight, but there's actually a way you can set a custom timer to turn that off. So for demonstration purposes, let's just go on Spotify, play the previous podcast I was listening to. So we see here it still is playing. If you go into your clock app and down here, if you tap timer, see where it says when timer ends, you can set it to do different commands. But if you go all the way down, you can actually check mark, stop playing, hit set. And now you can actually create a timer when you want the audio to stop playing. So let's say I should be asleep in 20 minutes, tap start, and now the timer is gonna begin and that podcast is still playing. And when you lock your screen, it'll actually show you how much time is left. But after the timer is done, this podcast is gonna stop playing so it doesn't accidentally wake you up during the night. Pretty cool, right? Now for this final one, there's a 50-50 chance you might already know, which is why I saved it for the very end. But in case you're not aware, I'm gonna go ahead and show you anyways, because I know there's a percentage of folks who just got an iPhone for the first time, so you might have not been aware. If you have an iPhone, Mac, or you're just not used to the larger display by not having a home button, you could actually slide your thumb down and have reachability on a corner of the display without having to extend your hand all the way in case you can't reach the top part of the screen. If you want to enable reachability, just simply just go into your settings. You could also type in reachability from up here and here you go. You should see it right away and then you could just enable it or disable it from here. That is reachability. So yeah. Now your phone's going to be ad free in a way your music library is going to look a lot cleaner. Yeah. Guys, check out that video right there, especially if you are using the latest iPhone 11 Pro, Max or regular 11 Pro, doesn't matter. The new camera array has a lot of tricks that you should definitely know about. And that right there, that's a playlist about the Apple Watch. Yeah, I know, really interesting stuff. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.